So welcome back to Orchid House. I'm Olivier in Fort Lauderdale and today I'm going to show you four um, Cattleya hybrids, four crosses, three of which are extremely popular here in South Florida. I want to show them because they are pretty but I also want to focus on the nomenclature. So the, these weird names that you see and try and explain why they are what they are. So I have a cheat sheet so uh, because it's <laughs> too complicated to even the pronunciation of these names is sometimes impossible. So this is an easy one it's Catlianti chocolate drop. Now chocolate drop is super popular as such but it's also present in a huge amount of hybrids uh, downstream so uh, further uh, generations because you see the, the glossiness, the waxiness of the, the petals and the sepals and uh, that's very popular. Now they are usually in the reds but I have one uh, which is kind of yellowish orangey <coughs> and uh, it has a fantastic fragrance which is very floral. Now this is a primary hybrid which means that the two parents are species so orchids that uh, occur in the wild and they are Cattleya guttata and Guariante orantiaca. Now Guariantes are basically Central American Cattleyas. They, the previous century, the 20th century, they were considered Cattleyas and then they were reclassified. There's a lot of reclassification happening because of DNA analysis and stuff like that. So now everything that's a Cattleya from Central America is considered Guariantes. There's only four species but they are all very common and very popular. So this is one of those. Now you have Cattleya and Guarianti and so the name is Cattleyanti. You always have, you mix up, uh, you take the beginning of one name and then the end of the other one and then you create something that's new. I think they call that an autogenus uh, made up of two genera since it's one genus and two genera and then you have uh, Cattleyanti chocolate drop. Now let's say that you add a brassavola to your mix and let me check here so it's called brasso catante and we're going to make sure it's the, the right one see brasso catante uh, abbreviation bct now i want you to uh, focus on the coloring these with a, a fresh color it's a fresh flower there's still one that hasn't opened yet and i uh, actually lost two to the thrips and then on the other side you have uh, mature flowers that are turning white, one which is actually about to uh, die and fade. Uh, this one also has a very floral fragrance. BCTs in my experience, the few that I've seen are very beautiful. Uh, they are fairly waxy, uh, they have beautiful flowers. And uh, so basically now you have three genera in the background. You still have Cat uh, Cattleya and uh, Guarianti, but you also have Brassavola. So hence Brasso Catanti, that's why you have the name. So this is called uh, Brasso Catanti Taiwan Chame Chameleon. It's a cross from 2017, it's fairly popular. And in the background you have 44% of Brassavola nodosa, 25% of Guarianti Boringiana and then a multitude of other species. So this is a heavily hybridized uh, cross beautiful as you can tell and like I said so the color fades after a while. Now if you uh, do away with Brassavola and let me see here uh, so among the reclassification you also had uh, uh, two Brassavolas that were separated from the genus just like Guarianti was separated from Cattleyas and so Digbiana which is super popular that's that green flower with a big beard the leaf is bearded, it's very popular, it's very uh, special. And then Glauca, these two uh, Borsavolas were taken out of uh, the genus and they created Rincolelia, which is a new genus with only two species. Now, if instead of uh, adding to Cattleya and Guarianti, instead of adding Borsavola, you add that, um, uh, I'm losing my, uh, Rincolelia, so you have Rincatlianti. And this is the ring Catlianti. Unfortunately, I mean, I've been waiting for four days now and I always think it's going to open up and it, it doesn't. And as you can tell, my other flowers are starting to fade. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to show you what it should look like. It's a beautiful flower, extremely fragrant. This is called Finofan Boy. I assume it uh, originates in Asia. It's an older cross, 2001 
from the four I'm showing you today, it's the only one that to my knowledge is not really common here. And here in the background, so you have 25% Aclandiae, which is a Cattleya, 25% of Cattleya guttata, but you only have, the only Rincolela is Digbiana, you only have 2%. So there's very little uh, of Rincolela in this cross, but because of, because of it, you have the three genera, it's, it's Rincatlianti, and it's abbreviated RTH. So this is why you have all that, that weird stuff, I mean, all these names that, that, look, that sound and look weird, that are tough to pronounce, that's because we have to look at what's in the background, that's, that's the reason. And now we're going to finish with this beauty here, another very popular uh, species, I posted this on the Facebook uh, page, uh, Florida Orchid Growing, and this is across from uh, Jim Roberts, and it's insanely popular. Now this one has four different genera in the background, and uh, uh, so on top of uh, Cattleya, Guarianti, and Brassavola, you add Encyclia. There's a lot of Encyclia in this background, and now you have something that's called Le Suerara. So any name that ends in A-R-A, -A, you know you're having at least three uh, generals or more in the background. Those are very complex hybrids. And what precedes the ARA is the last name of a person, typically, and I guess this must be some French-speaking person, Le Sueur, I would think. So that's, that's what uh, this is, Le Sueur, uh, Dick Pippen. And this one is a very, very f uh, lemony fragrance. And you may not really be able to see the de these flowers are fresher. I mean, the fading here is not as strong as uh, for uh, the, the Taiwan chameleon, but it does happen too. So the, these flowers don't, uh, the color is not stable. Uh, magnificent little flower, extremely pleasant fragrance. And so here now you have four different species in the background, and now it turns into a Lisu Arara. So, you may think these are all Cattleya crosses and why don't you call them Cattleyas? Well, because you have to look at what the parentage is in the background and that's why you have all that craziness going on. And of course, uh, once they start reclassifying uh, certain species, they move from one genus to another, well, you mess up uh, the, the name of uh, the hybrid and some of these guys have been reclassified several times. So I hope I didn't give you a headache, but I hope you enjoy the sight of these gorgeous plants. Uh, except for the Phenophan boy, I mean, the other three are very popular. So Chocolate Drop, <coughs> the Taiwan Chameleon, and then the Dick Pippen here. Those are very popular crosses here in South Florida for good reasons. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.